How did the data point model become important to the global economy? Many people haven't heard of the data point model and I certainly think that most good architects haven't thought, heard of the data point model. But if you Google data point model and EBA, you'll see that the data point model is used to define the European Banking Authority's FinRep and CoRep reports. And these are the reports submitted by the 5,000 banks of Europe um, to their central regulator. Um, I think the regulator mandated these because they said, if we're going to guarantee you, you guys in the face of the biggest economic meltdown in the last 80 years, we need to monitor you in very great detail. So it came about that an obscure data architectural approach uh, became important to the world's response to the GFC. I'm Greg Soulsby and welcome to this video on the magic of the data point model. To give you a flavour of what the data point model can do, let's have a look at how currently a bank will meet the need for a complex uh, report uh, requiring data from multiple systems. The first problem is that in to run a query in the current data management approach uh, we use SQL, Structured Query Language, and SQL can only be run against one database at a time. Therefore, for reports and analytics requiring data from multiple sources, we need to copy the data, duplicate the data, into one place. Uh, not only that, the data has to be made congruent. In, in Asia, trade date is the day you, the trade was entered into the system. In Europe, the trade date is the execution date. So we end up with complex transformation processes as the data is transformed from one to the other, from one place to the other. Not only that, once it arrives in the data warehouse, we have got the data again hard coded into a particular viewpoint. New business requirement, new viewpoint required. We have a problem because we've got to rebuild and we now have to build another data warehouse. And so it is, data is duplicated and duplicated and duplicated and transformed and very expensive. Let's have a, have a look at how the data point model approaches differ. The first thing is that the logic for the wiring together of the data from different sources is maintained in the data point model. We, we take the structures from the sources, put them into the data point model form and then give, use the flexibility of the data point model to wire together the new viewpoint. And it's left in sort of in the logic or the design layer. It is not hard coded into the physical solution. We source the data from its original uh, place, its original form. So we've eliminated the need for a data warehouse and we've generated and we can generate new viewpoints, new ways of looking at data on the fly dy dynamically. Far more agile. So what is the data point model? What do we mean by that? So the, the, the data point model has concepts like data point, like values of data, like dimensions or aspects. Um, but the, the true magic is the idea, the true genius is the idea of separating the value and the data point. The data points have a value, but they can also have multiple other contexts. We don't keep the data point. The data point is not its value. It's a separate, the value and the data point are separate concepts. Like other um, semantic type technologies, uh, the, the metadata about the data, the, the, the rules about you know, all clients must have a birth, de date of birth, they are, they are stored as data. They are not stored, they're not, they're not represented as physical database structures. I thought we'd have a look at an example. So in the current approach with Oracle, We've got a client database. We store each date of birth of each client as the value. The data point is the value. So if there's a million clients, there's a million date of birth values. But in the last 100 years, 365 times 100, 36,500 dates that are possible for a birthday, um, it's stored one, we, we store instances of those dates one million times. In the data point model, we have the data points but, but we separate the data point from its value. So the date, the 1st of January 1945, is only stored once. And everybody whose birthday is that date points to that date. They don't store that date again. And so we can data with data points. You, you have, have a, they have a value, but they can be wired together to other values 
uh, and triangulated or, or identified or, or dimensioned uh, any number of times dynamically, not hard-coded into the data structures, into the database. Likewise, rules about um, you know, all clients must have a date of birth, uh, they're metadata, they're not hard-coded into the physical data structure. So we've got massively more flexible uh, approach to managing our data. Because we can handle, because we can reflect any, any, um, any schema of data, um, we can reverse engineer, for example, a database or a reg report or a spreadsheet into data point model form. So in this case, we're looking at um, how we go about that in Model DR, our, our data point modeling tool. Um, but we transform from relational format into data point model form, from reg report format into data point model format. We've now got all our data in data point model form, uh, and we can wire, use the flexibility of the data point model to wire together new viewpoints and access the data in its original place, eliminating the need for data warehouses and generating new solutions dynamically and rapidly in agile in an agile way and that is magic if you would like to know more there's um, modeldr.us is their website please uh, reach out to me on on um, on linkedin uh, and look forward to speaking to you on more of these videos as we d dive deeper into the data point model